happy new decade I hope you all have a great one um, so I've been asking my friends what sort of tutorials they would like me to do that they might find helpful and a very good friend of mine Lisa so she wanted to know how to make a really easy basic sponge cake for family get-togethers and birthday cakes things like that um, so today I'm going to show you how to make a Victoria sponge a classic UK English cake from Queen Victoria I believe um, so what you need what you need is four free-range eggs 225 grams of caster sugar 225 grams of self raising flour 225 grams of unsalted butter two teaspoons of baking powder a drop of good quality vanilla paste that is optional you don't necessarily need that it just adds a nice flavor and then for the filling you want a good quality ready-made jam from the supermarket obviously um, and <laughs> to for the cream part you either want um, a pot of double cream um, if it's a cake that you're going to serve straight away if you're making a birthday cake that you then want to cover with fondant you want to use icing sugar and butter um, 350 grams of icing sugar and 150 grams of um, butter so um, you can choose either we're going to use um, double cream and then on my channel there's a there's a tutorial on how to cover a cake so if you do use the buttercream version because you're doing a birthday cake there's a video on my channel to show you how to cover a cake in sugar paste as well um, you also need two um, eight inch in diameter tins and um, they don't have to have um, what do you call that I'm just gonna say bottomless that's not the right word you know what I mean they don't have to have those little things you can just tap them out but make sure if you don't have them <laughs> I still can't think of the word you put some butter and then greaseproof paper on the bottom just so that it doesn't get stuck and then you want to set your oven to preheat um, to 180 then you just measure out your Caster sugar, flour, butter, baking powder, and vanilla paste if you want it, and bung the eggs in too. Put them all in at the same time, it will be absolutely fine. You don't need to, as some people prefer to cream the butter first by doing the caster sugar in the butter, but actually, you don't need to. And if you're busy, then just bung it all in at the mixer. Um, weigh everything out, make sure you weigh everything accurately. Um, and also make sure that you leave the butter overnight so that it's really soft so it mixes easily and also another top tip make sure your flour is new and it's not been sitting in the cupboard for ages because what could happen if you use old flour the cake might not rise as well one thing I forgot to say is make sure you sieve the caster sugar and the flour. So another top tip, when adding the eggs to your bowl, use a ramekin and crack them into that because then you can check that there's no bits of eggshell in there and you can just crack them into there and then tip them into the bowl. You've put everything in your bowl, lovely. You can then put it in your mixer. Um, the best attachment is the paddle one. Um, and then with your butter that you've got left over, so from a 250 pack, if you use 225, you'll have 25 grams left. So you can use that to um, grease your tins, which is very important, so that your mixture doesn't stick to it. A tip when mixing, if you've got a KitchenAid mixer, just um, pulse it a couple of times, so that because if you put it on full blast to start with, mixture is just going to fly out of the um, container the thing. so just pulse it and then when it's come together and there's no sort of flour on the top you can then put it onto a high speed so you just mix it at high speed for no more than a couple of minutes just keep an eye on it you don't want it to curdle if it does look like it's curdling so it starts to look a bit like scrambled eggy nice um put a teaspoon of flour in or a tablespoon of flour <coughs> oh excuse me put a tablespoon of flour in 
um, and that should stop the curdling and just mix it briefly. So just to show you how to um, butter the tins, just get a little bit of greaseproof paper and just sort of move it around the tin, um, just like that, and then sort of around the edges as well. Make sure you get every part of the tin, uh, just so if you want the cake to come out perfectly. You don't want any of it to be stuck to it and sort of half come out. So it'll look like that once you've buttered it, greased it rather. And that's it, all mixed. So then you can pop it into your um, pans. What I do is put them onto the scales and weigh the mixture out evenly. So just put it to zero. And then if your pans weigh the same, you can kind of make sure that there's equal amounts in both. They weighed out to about 400 grams in each, roughly. Um, so then you just get a pallet knife or a normal knife, doesn't need to be a pallet knife, I've just got one. Um, and then just spread it out evenly across the pan. Okay, so when you've done that, I've got two top tips. So to get rid of any air bubbles, just smack your pans on the side to get rid of them and it will sort of get rid of any air bubbles like that. Just give them a quick whack. And then another top tip, if you want your cakes to be like flat and not to have a rise on them, I want one of mine to have a rise, so I'm just gonna do this on one, is to put a hole in the middle of the pan. I don't know why this works but it does, so just sort of like that. If you put a hole in, it will cook and the top will be flat. But for this one, I'm gonna leave it because I want that to be the top part of the cake and I want that to rise. Um, I think this is probably most useful if you're making a cake for a birthday that you're gonna cover. Um, in which case, I would put the holes in the middle of both of the tins. And they are good to go in the oven. So pop them in the oven for, I would say, uh, most recipes of this amount say 25 minutes. But I would say my oven cooks quite quickly. You'll know your oven. Um, I'm going to put it in for 20 minutes and then just test it with um, a fork. So after 20 minutes, get them out, um, put a fork in. If it comes out with liquid on, um, mixture on, then it's not cooked. If it comes out clean, then it's cooked and you can take them both out. Okay, so you've got your cakes and you've tested that they're all cooked by putting a, a fork in and it's come out clean and they're all golden looking. So then you can get them out. If you've got a spring back, oh, I remember the name. That's what they're called, spring back um, tins. So you can get them out. All you need to do is just run a knife just underneath the um, underneath the cake, just all the way round, so that it comes away from the tin when you flip it. So it's like a clean break there. So you've got the full cake. And just put your cakes to one side for a sec. And all you want to do is you want your bowl. You need the whisk attachment. And you're just going to empty into the uh, mixing bowl your double cream and then you're just going to put it on to whisk as it starts to stiffen just add a tiny drop of your vanilla um, paste just a tiny bit so once you've whisked it on high power for about um, four to five minutes it will look kind of stiff like a proper kind of like clotted cream like that. Um, I've put a tiny dash of vanilla essence in to taste and I've put one teaspoon of icing sugar in which makes it taste less creamy and more sugary. It depends on the taste you want. If you want a fresh cream taste with jam, then just, just whisk up the double cream as it is. So we're gonna set that to one side and then I'm gonna fill a piping bag with some jam uh, raspberry jam to put on the base to put in the middle of one of the one of the cakes when you're filling a, a plastic piping bag you can just put it turn it inside out and put it over your hand like that 
and sort of bring the sides down so you don't the jam doesn't go everywhere so then you can just put it pop it in the middle you filled up a bag um this is quite cold from the fridge so just give it a little squish so that it's all smooth so once you've filled the bag with jam just give it a twist at the top and just don't cut the tip off yet just set it to one side um, and then fill the second plastic piping bag with the cream. So what you're gonna do is just spread some in the middle. It's just spread this on your cake. Put your little moat round of the um, Cream and just spread your jam in the middle so it's nice and full lots of jam always put more than you think in because no one wants a thin slice of jam do they in their Victoria sponge then that's all good then you can put your lid on the cake and decorate the top. You just cut a big chunk of your icing bag off and you can just ice little circles on. So just squeeze, pull up, squeeze, and you get a little. And then what you can do, they don't have to be too perfect, is you can just put um, raspberries on the top of them and push them down. So it will look good and then we'll put some icing sugar on the top because icing sugar makes everything look better. You could fill the whole of the top of the cake with it really, however much cream you've got you can just use it all up. So you're nearly finished, you just get a nice pack of raspberries um, and put them just dot them about on the little on your little circles so literally just get a teaspoon of icing sugar and a sieve and just gently dust over the cake and the raspberries oh it looks quite nice Victoria sponge with double cream, jam, and the raspberries on the top. And if you want to fill it, if you want to keep the cake for a few days and you want to fill it with buttercream instead, you can see on my um, videos how to make buttercream. It's in the how to cover a cake um, tutorial. Um, and then you can cover the whole cake with it and also afterwards crumb coat it and cover it in fondant if you're making a birthday cake I've got a tutorial on that as well I hope that was useful for you um, to make an easy cake for any of your events coming up and check out my channel for I've got a really good video on how to make a cupcake bouquet um, for your maybe for your valentine coming up in February can you believe it's nearly February all right take care guys